afternoon. Welcome to the Must Love Yarn Podcast. It's Wednesday. It is Wednesday. We're a day early. Mm-hmm. We'll see if we can keep it together. It's all my fault. Yeah. It happens. Totally happens. We've got a bunch of sales reps coming tomorrow. Well, that's the fun, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Buying yarn. Looking at all the new stuff. Mm-hmm. But anyway. So it's Wednesday. It's June 5th. 5th. And here's June. I don't know what happened to May. No. So this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, crocheting, yarn, all things sort of fiber and fiber related. Mm-hmm. And we are podcasting in our store in Shelburne, Vermont. Shel- blah, 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 blah. Shelburne, Vermont. <laughs> um, and you can find the store out on all social media as Must Love Yarn. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook. Um, feel free to follow or friend us on any of those platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, we've definitely gotten quite a bit more active on Instagram the last yeah. week or so. Yeah, we've had a lot of stuff going on, and we've got a lot of more events coming up, too, yep. where we're going to be probably posting yes. some pictures. And I've been cross-posting on a lot of the accounts. Mm-hmm. People may or may not have noticed. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see multiple mm-hmm. pictures... Yeah, I figured out how to post a multiple accounts at once on Instagram. <laughs> yep. I also figured out Linktree, so watch out. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yay me. Uh, it, so I'm Angela. And I'm Kelly. And you can find me out on social media, Instagram, and Ravelry as Junior Bird Kid. And you can find me on Instagram as Kelly O Spins, and you can find me on Ravelry as Kelly Spins. Yep. And we do have a podcast mascot. Mm-hmm. Um, our mascot is a meerkat. This is Gage the meerkat. Mm-hmm. Um, she's wearing one of her cute new outfits uh, that we had to tailor a little bit. <laughs> I was gonna say, didn't it have like little? I, I think it was a dress, and I think. Yeah. Um, She's. She can wear it as a dress, okay. can't she? I don't know. Let's see. We're gonna so, find so. out. Um, so you can actually follow Gage out on Meerkat. Uh, Meerkat. She <laughs> out, on, <laughs> out, Inst- on, Meerkat. out on Instagram. Um, she has her own Instagram page, uh, which has been a little more active lately because I've gotten gotten my act together, guys. Been some. Well, actually, Andrea's gotten her act together and has been sending me pictures. <laughs> So let's just be honest about what's happening here. <laughs> Look, she can wear it. Suck it in, Gage. Oh, last week we showed the really fun outfit um, that Diane sent us uh, as well. So we had a little costume change mm-hmm. um, because of the new outfit that arrived. The buttons are so cute. I think she should wear the buttons in the front. Oh, I know. Those are cute. Look at those buttons. Those are adorable. Ta-da! I understand there might be a bikini on the way um, based on some messaging, in private messaging with somebody wanting a picture of where the tail placement was. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Awesome. Look at the ruffles. Look at it's that. It's so adorable. So cute. Little crocheted dress. And I so made it for her like a dress. Who sent us that? This is from Bente. Oh, from our good friend Bente. Yeah, Bente, um, she's the Arctic Crafts. In Norway. In Norway. I know. If you haven't seen her beautiful yarn, go check out her Etsy shop. Yes. Yeah. She's so, got lovely yarn. Thank you. Gage thanks you. It's adorable. And she also sent us some beautiful stitch markers. Oh, yeah. Let me show these. We were I was fawning over them in the And they're outtakes. semi-precious stones, and she told us she wrote us a lovely letter and told us what all of them are and they're just so beautiful so thank you so much that was just really yes, sweet thank you i'm fixing yarn gauges yarn oh her her yarn ball there is kind of yarn ball whoops i pulled her needles out too i'm just we just don't mind us gauge don't mind us at least we remember to bring her over kind yeah, we of did remember we started her. and then we had to get up and go get things we forgot so right. I may just leave like the blank chair because it's <laughs> totally perfect for the outtakes. All right, I'm gonna. <laughs> we just vanish and then we both show back up again. <laughs> Poof. Poof. So All right, I'm gonna fix. So while Kelly's now. fixing that, 
I'm going to start with our spiely for uh, our pick of the week. Okay, excellent. Um, so we, we start our podcast uh, after we get done of all of the introductions and um, ramblings. <laughs> we like to have a pick of the week for you. And so the way it works is for the next two weeks, um, Friday to t- two Fridays from now, uh, with the coupon code that we will give you, you can get 10% off in our online store and also in store if you come in. Uh, we do have new little pick of the week tags that we've been uh, putting up uh, to show you or remind you. But just when you're checking out, make sure you remind us um, that it's a pick of the week because mm-hmm. we don't always remember um, or uh, somebody working may not have seen the podcast to mm-hmm. know what that pick was yet. Or seen the little sign yep. around the store because yeah. we've got a lot of yarns here. Yep. So just feel, just remind them, hey, that was it. Wasn't that a pick of the week? And they'll give you the discount. Um, so, uh, and if you're unsure where the coupon code goes, we did a tutorial in episode seventy three on where that goes, and that also would apply. So later on, we're going to talk about um, the yarny ad games Mm -hmm. and some Mm -hmm. t-shirts and if you're local and want to pick it up here on Saturday you can do that there's a coupon code for or or if you have to have it shipped to you there's a coupon code for free shipping nice Um, and she uses the same system that we do so it's the same place that's why I'm mentioning it here Um, so if you're not sure where that coupon code goes or how that works um, please check out episode 73 and if you're doing pain via PayPal, it will send you to PayPal first and then back. So it's when you come back after putting in the PayPal stuff that you can put in the coupon code. It's a little n- not intuitive. Yeah. Um, but that's just the way the system works. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so we had, if you follow our Instagram, you saw we had a really fun new shipment of yarn come in mm-hmm. at the end of last week. Uh, which we splashed up all over Instagram. Um, we, a large Malabrigo reorder showed up. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I see in the little basket there that uh, Kelly has picked uh, our Malabrigo sock as our pick of the week. I did. We have so many colors. So, Oh, my God. So many pretty colors. Total, I think we've got about 17 different colorways oh. in <laughs> stock. Oh my, oh, my goodness. Not all of them. We've got... So they come in, uh, Malabrigo for the Malabrigo sock comes in bags of five. Okay. Not all of those do we have five of each of. But if you, a lot of times you only need one or two skeins anyway for projects that you're doing. So some of them, we only have a couple skeins of that yarn in stock. So, um, but we do have a lot of it. We have... um, here, I can take some of those, too. Yeah. If you just stay for the outtakes, we were, like, pairing colors I know, together. We, we were. We're, yeah, so if you need any color inspiration. Planning my next three-color shawl. Like, I don't have lots of three-color shawl combinations already in my house. Lots of great colorways. They Again, buying yarn and using yarn, two different hobbies. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, I'm just going to stand them up in here so I can I'm very it. good at both of them. <laughs> All it's like a basket of colors. Basket of colors. So they do kettle dyed yarns, and mm-hmm. the Malabrigo sock is a 100% super wash sock. So it does not have any nylon in it. Just so you know, so if you do like to knit socks that have nylon in it, this is not going to be a yarn that you'll want to use for that. But it's great for shawls. And a lot of people do knit socks with, um, with the yarns that don't have nylon they just the friction points so like the heels and the balls of the feet will wear more quickly and they'll wear all the way through whereas the mm-hmm. sock yarns that have nylon in them a lot of times the nylon will remain where the wool will kind of get worn out so you can you can go back in and darn them easier mm-hmm. so that's just something to to consider uh when if you want to buy this yarn uh the price for this yarn is $19.20 I believe some of the skeins uh, the price went up on this a while ago and some of the skeins um, you'll see if you go to buy some of it you might be like well these are $18 and change and 
so whenever whenever we get new shipments of that in, then we up the price. We don't up it on the the ones that have already that are still in stock. So that's why you might see a difference in in price. But it's ten percent off whatever the listed price is. Okay. And uh, we've got some great colors. This is chameleon, and this is a fairly new colorway to them. We have this in the sock, and we also have it in worsted. It's a really, I just love it. It's a multicolor. It's beautiful. And I just love the colors in there. And uh, let me give you the details on Malabrigo sock. I know most of you are probably very familiar with this yarn. It is approximately 440 yards, uh, three, and a, uh, three and a half ounces, so that's like 100 grams. Eight stitches per inch on a US 1 to 3 uh, needle made in Peru. Lovely company, too. It's family, yeah. still family-owned company, and they, they're just really nice people to work with. We, uh, like, we like having their yarn in store. And it's so f nice to work. It's, a, it's beautiful yarn. It's very yeah. well dyed. I love the twist to the yarn. It's, mm -hmm. it's really just a great yarn to knit with. So yeah. um, these are just some of the colors that we've got in stock. A lot of darker, deeper tones, some jewel tones. This is, you know, this one stands right out because it's so bright, and this the is gray, really yeah. pretty as well. Uh, this one is Plomo, I think. Is this one? Nope, Polar Morn. And this Polar. one is a new one that they have just started doing. It, Polar Morn has been around for quite some time, but they just started doing it on the sock base, so I did bring that one in. Oh, nice. That's yeah. such a nice kind of purpley gray. It is. It's really pretty. It's really, really pretty. And of course, Ravelry Red. I love this red. Mm -hmm. Such a deep, pretty. And it leans a little bluer. It's not an orangey red, uh, which for me it looks better on, on me. Uh, so I do like that one. But um, then we've got, you know, this is it's funny. Arco Iris, whenever we get it, it always looks so different. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's got a lot more yellows in it and warm tones, and other times it's more like the greens and purples and blues and I mean there is some some warmer tones up in there um, but it's it's kind of it's fun I like you know they're always just a little bit different but those are so look at that purple with that's that that's such a gorgeous that's that a great pretty? color combo yeah and we were pulling yeah we were the chameleon <laughs> and the ravelry red and the teal feather we haven't had teal feather on sock before too and this is I a great that color. I know we have this I think in almost every other of their yarns the, that we that we stock the Mecca and the Rasta and the Rios and so uh, and this is Potion this is a little bit similar but it has a lot more of the the reds and oranges in it mm -hmm. uh, so what do we want our code to be for this week I'm pretty sure we've used Malibri I mean weekly pick Malibri go before I think we have too so. Uh, Maybe we should just go with something like weekly pick pretty. I've been doing that one before. <laughs> okay, that works for me. <laughs> weekly, weekly, weekly pick, pick pretty. pretty. My pretties. Okay. <laughs> and Angel put the coupon code down here mm -hmm. so that you can find that. And yep. we have linked to the yarn in show notes. Yep. So you can find that there. Yeah. Nice. So I'm actually wearing a hand knit today. I, uh, That's fabulous. I know. I not. It's probably going to be too warm by the time I get out to go leave here. So this <laughs> is my Dark and Stormy. Uh, it's a Thea Coleman pattern. Um, it is knit on the wrong yarn. On the wrong yarn? It's knit on the wrong yarn. Okay. So it's, this is a, a Merino silk blend yarn. And what I mean by the wrong yarn is that my shawl collar does not stand up the way the shawl collar should because the silk is too, which is fine. It's very drapey and I love it. It's just not a good fit for the shawl collar. I, I, well, I guess this depends on, on the look you're going for. Yeah. And if you wanted a stand up collar, then but I, I think it's gorgeous. I don't ever button this sweater. In mm -hmm. fact, I actually never put buttons on it. I mm -hmm. always wear it open, so it's not as big of a deal. If I wanted to wear it, it an actual button where it, the shawl collar is meant to be more up, it would probably annoy me. But because of how I wear it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, I've considered, I want to knit the sweater again, I think, mm -hmm. out of a more, like a wool stock or, mm. you know, something along those lines that's um, a little bit, has doesn't have that drape 
yeah. like the silk does, uh, because then I the shell collar will stand up the way it's supposed to. So, and I think this yarn is I want to say Brooks Farm yarn. It was yarn I got at Rhinebeck. Okay. I don't know if they still. I don't think they. I can't remember if they still come to Rhinebeck or not. Because mm. I got it a lot. This was this sweater is old. <laughs> It was probably, I think it was yarn I might have got like the first or second time we went to Rhinebeck. Okay. Um, so yeah, quite a, quite a while ago. But it's a fun knit. The Aquilman's patterns are great. They almost yeah. always have cables of some sort on them. Yeah. Um, and all of her, almost all of her patterns are named after cocktails. Um, yeah. So Dark and Stormy is an actual drink. I did Bailey's Irish Cream nice. sweater. That was cables and lace. It was really pretty. I did margarita. I, did. I like that one as well. Yeah. It's more of a size of short sleeve one. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes. So anyway, so I've dusted this off today. It's feeling the gray cardigan. Nice. So, um, I do. I did continue. I did list. Um, a finished object that I actually talked about last week a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I hadn't gotten the ends woven in and I hadn't blocked it yet. Both of those things I have now done. So I brought it back Excellent. again. Uh, I haven't clipped, I haven't clipped the little <laughs> tiny ends off and it's in a plastic bag so it doesn't get stuff on it. Um, but so it's, pretty. thank you. It's massive. Um, I had some I would say blocking challenges mm. because, <laughs> space. <laughs> well, space was one. So I did actually fold it. You can see my fold. Mm-hmm. I folded it in half because it was, that was the only way I could get it to fit on the bed, mm-hmm. queen size bed. Um, but the challenge with this is if your eye cord edge is too tight, mm. you get some weird things happening yeah. with the shape, which is what I've run into. It's nothing that is going to cause me to not be able to wear this yeah because when you wear it you're not even gonna you're not, see that it where it's noticeable is when you have it laid out and you're mm-hmm. trying to pin it straight and you're like that doesn't look right <laughs> um but it's it is done it's beautiful thank you and i think i've decided to go no tassels for now mm-hmm. i have enough yarn that if i want to come back and make tassels i can and maybe that's the way to keep like this point down because mm-hmm. it adds some weight yep. to it um, so this is just a mirror image on both sides, but as you can see, it is massive. Massive. So we have. So this is like this edge is a little wonky over here, partially because <laughs> of the eye cord. So, but when uh, Kelly said once it's on, it's you're never gonna notice. No. Never gonna notice. Beautiful. Thank you. And I know at least one other person when they saw the post uh, mentioned that they were going to have to pick up their changes and I know you've mm-hmm. talked about picking your changes back up. I do have to pick mine up. Again. Yeah. I love the smock stitch on here. It was so fun and I figured out not too long into it that you can actually just use a cable needle. Like mm-hmm. her directions have you sliding stitches back and forth and mm-hmm. I was like I should just be able to put it on a cable needle and wrap it around. Mm-hmm. So that sped things up a lot. Yeah. So that's the smock stitch that Kelly's talking about. So it's just like all of her. So this is a knitting expat um, pattern. Like all of her patterns, they're very intuitive. Once you get into mm-hmm. them, um, they just they make sense. Like yeah. you can get to the point where you really don't have to look much at the pattern. She uses she uses texture really really well yeah. in her patterns too. Yep, which is so An fun. Interesting texture, mm-hmm. right? Like who would have thought to put all of these different stitches together? It really and, keeps it interesting. Yeah. You know, to do a piece this large. Yeah. And but to have yeah. that texture, you know, then the different sections, it kind of keeps yep. you interested in. Yeah. It's lovely. Thank you. It was a fun knit. And now it's, it's still cold enough that I could probably wear this. <laughs> so, anyway, so this is my ginormous, ginormous shawl. Done. Lots of yarn. Good. Could it use it as a wall hanging? You could almost, or like a table runner. It's probably mm. too big for my table. Um, oh, maybe not. You know, the points hang down and then mm-hmm. probably and my kids would spill something on it. <laughs> or the dog would grab it and run through the house with it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually more likely. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry for crinkling, guys. Just want to get it back in the bag. 
<laughs> so anyway. Done. <laughs> so I have some FOs. Nice. Um, I did, as I mentioned, I did do some socks on my knitting machine, my circular sock knitting machine. I've got an Earl Bacher Speedster. And uh, this is all of the yarn that I'm going to show you is all Primrose yarn. This is Primrose in the sorcery colorway. Nice. And these are just some pretty plain. I do top down and then I just have to Kitchener the toe at the end. Uh, and this is the Sophia base, which is the, the cashmere, uh, merino cashmere nylon base. So they're really, really soft. So that's the first pair. And then the second pair, I just, I switched the, the heels and toe colorway. So I've got these and this is fun house and then soda pop nice. for the main colors so these were really fun and they went really well together so I thought I would just switch it up and do these so now I've got lots of new socks that I can wear so with those you put the heel and toes in them or did you do it on the I machine? did it right on the machine okay yeah nice. I, I did these just because it was really fast just to do it all cool all, all at once so that that's the part that takes the most time when you're doing full socks you know obviously the the main part the the leg and the foot of the sock are quite quick it's doing the short row section but it's still fun and they, they come out pretty well that's cool that you can do it in two colors yeah yeah I mean you do have some ends to weave some in, ends to weave in. Uh, you get a little bit of a loose spot where you, you have you're using the two the two it yarns like are coming normal socks exactly <laughs> but then you just use the end and yeah you know you have to weave them in anyway so just use the end and, and close it up so obviously you know these are a little bit quicker because you don't have you have the two ends at the at the toe mm -hmm. and at the top to weave in but uh, you don't have the heel the heel and toe colors the changes of color to do so these are a little bit quicker to do when you do them just in a solid color but they're still a lot they're a lot faster than doing it by hand anyway you know oh well, that would be true and i like doing they call this the the hung hem so you can see that this is thicker and so it, it folds over if you look at a lot of commercial socks that's how they're done so you fold this over and will you knit i do mine a total of 40 stitches so this is this is 20 20 stitches high and then uh, you lift up the very first stitches that you do and you put those on the needles all the way around. And then when you ne knit in your next row, it locks that all together and you get the, the thicker cuff, which I find stays up better and it even stays up better on me than doing a, a ribbed top. Nice. So, yeah. Cool. Yep, so. Once it's sock wearing season, although I wear socks in the summer, so. I do too. So I th was thinking that I would have this um, granny's favorite sweater done because I only had another sleeve or so to go. So cute. Thank you. So I have one sleeve totally done. This is granny's favorite. Um, I needed to try it on the recipient to make sure that I had the arms long enough mm. and to make sure that the body was actually long enough. And I tried to take a picture. So before <laughs> I, she tried it on and I was like, okay, that's good. Stay right there. And I grabbed my camera and as I was, she had already was taking it off. And I was like, can you put it? No. I'm like, oh. okay. So it does fit her. I've got the second sleeve going here um, and then it will need to be blocked I also got all the ends woven in because there was quite a few just dangling down annoying me they do after a while like if you're pulling your project out they're just like ripped. they get wrapped around your working yarn and um, so it will need so this has you knit the button band as you go so I won't have to do that at the end yeah and but it's probably gonna need some uh, grow gain ribbon because mm -hmm. it's a little flappy and I might need it on both sides just to keep it from flipping 
but mm-hmm. blocking will probably help with mm-hmm. that. So yeah. then it just has three buttons at the top. Cute. I think I have some buttons in my button stash that will work well um, with these colors. Nice. Been one of my orders over the years of I'm just gonna buy a bunch of buttons. I know when we go to Rhinebeck, we oh, find buttons we love. We're like, I don't have a project in mind for these, no, but I love them. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's uh, if I keep working on it or have time to work on it, um, I might be able to get the knitting knitting done by mm-hmm. next week. But I did pick up a couple of other projects. One, because this one was waiting for a bit, because I needed to try it on a person (laughs) before it just continued. (laughs) So I had to find a time when that was going to go over well. Um, Trying to decide which of my projects to pick up next to show. (laughs) I can show mine. So I've only been working on a couple knit projects. I've been doing some other things. Well, to suck, I've been doing some stuff on my stuff running machine and noise i'd been doing a little bit of embroidery lately cool uh which i didn't bring in to show you guys i don't know if you'd be interested or not but oh probably i have i'm still working on granada which i haven't gotten very far on i haven't done a ton of knitting lately i've been doing a lot of other stuff but this is it's gonna it's like a little shoulder cozy and it's hard to tell but it's got a kind of bigger cowl neck and I am striping it because I want to use both the Barocco Mykonos, which is the darker blue-gray color, and the Stromboli, the Lana Grossa Stromboli, which is this lighter kind of greenish, bluish gray color. And that has some little slubs in it, so it has texture. And I'm not terribly far, but I think I have to knit this in until it's like nine inches, I want to say. And then I start increasing for so it's I'm working on this part of it right now, the kind okay. of collar. And because this is a really drapey fabric, it's just going to lay fairly, you know, flat, close to, to your body. It's not going to stand up. I wonder if that's the pattern um, the person who put the co- posted a comment on the blog on the website was asking for the pattern for Stromboli. And I was like, oh. Oh, I didn't see I that. No, I just saw it today. Oh, okay. I haven't um, seen that. I wonder if it's that pattern that it they were looking be. for. It could be. I yeah, I'll take a look. Okay. And I was like Stromboli. I don't remember talking about a Stromboli pattern. Oh. I just forgot. Okay. Stromboli is the yarn. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and it this... was on the episode that I think you had started. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna be a really, really easy project. It's basically done. I haven't looked at it completely, but I'm pretty sure it's done. Just like a raglan style sweater there's it looks like there's four increase points at the shoulders where you just increase out and i'm just striping them evenly so i'm doing six stripes six rows of rounds of the mykonos and two rounds of the stromboli so i can almost guarantee that's the pattern that they were looking for it's all coming together now (laughs) it's clicking it's all clicking Uh, so I kind of, I have a half object, Sweet. half finished object. I have a sock done. I can't even remember if this oh, one's done right. the last time or not, or if I the don't. toe needed to be finished or something. I, I don't, don't know. I don't think you had finished it. So this sock is done, and I've got this much of the next sock done. Sweet. Because I've been knitting at baseball. And this is a perfect baseball knitting project. Mm-hmm. Because if I get interrupted, and inevitably I do. Uh, it's very easy to set aside. It's in a small bag. And I can also knit while standing and or walking mm-hmm. with this type of project. Yeah. So making some pretty good progress. You can see how much baseball I've <laughs> been doing lately. This one's done. This one's well on its way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And there's more baseball in my future, so stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, so. That's right, because Little League goes partway into the summer. Yeah, I think I think it's next week is the last week. I think. They keep adding games. <laughs> Just like, is this ever going to end? I know, because um, when I played in, I played softball in, in school, high school. Yeah. And it 
overlapped. I think there was only two weeks, so high school started earlier in the spring and went until just before the end of school, and then mm -hmm. Little League, Senior League, picked up two weeks before the end of the school year. So this games. one, yeah, these run, we started in May, so like the entire month of May, and then all the way till school's out. <laughs> we started, I remember for, for high school, we started in April, and there were times snow that we were playing in snow. Yeah, I We usually that. didn't play outside until it was warm enough, but there were times, I remember one year, we got like two feet of snow, but then the next day it was... 60 degrees so we were playing yeah. in two feet of snow our feet were soaked but it was so warm we would start in like late march i want to say yeah yeah and so we were battling right. the rain no yeah. lots of rain yeah um many games getting rained out or rescheduled mm -hmm. or practices mm -hmm. i actually liked it we we would do sliding practice when it was rainy so you would run slide the bases slide out in the outfield mm -hmm. practice catching the crazy fly balls mm -hmm. you know, literally be covered from head to toe in mud and just walk right yeah. into the shower with all your clothes on it was the best <laughs> it was the absolute best um super fun <laughs> yeah but. yeah we had we had snow for so long that we ended up doing a lot of sliding practice inside and we mm. always had to make sure we had sweatpants for that day God, because yeah, you can't do that without those. Ugh. Yeah. That's and we fun. still ended up with, you know, like, some good sized burns, bruises and burns, burns and raspberries. Yeah. And stuff. I mean, it's hard enough when you're out on the field yeah. and like dirt and grass and stuff, but in the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun times. Oh, yeah. Fun times. So I started a new project. Excellent. Let me see. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. This is the shift along. Oh, is the it? Yeah, yeah, the hat. hat. Yep. Nice. Yep. So I. All right. Um, so this is shift along by. I think is it Andrea Mary? Andrea Mary. Yep. So all her we, shift yarn. Yep. Uh, yarn all patterns are shift patterns. patterns. Shifty pattern. So this is uh, fiber stash, twinkle toes. So there's sparkles in there. That looks like jailhouse rock. I believe it is jailhouse rock. I may have said it was great, Scott. Um, on my Ravelry page, but I'm gonna go with what Kelly says because she's knows, and I can't find the tag. <laughs> it's darker. Uh, Great Scott's all, is the really pale. I think you're right. Really light, light. You're right. So I will go update my Ravelry page <laughs> as soon as we get done podcasting, so I have the right colorway in there. <laughs> uh, I've had this yarn for a really long time. I use it for other stuff. I think it was in my um, the other really big shawl that I did. In the greens and reds, whatever that was called. The fade. The fade. The fade. Yeah. Um, so that was in there. I've used it for a couple of other things, maybe some Christmas ornaments. And so it seemed like the perfect um, yarn. So this is one of the CC's wool oh, yeah. crazy skeins. And I did not realize how long <laughs> the color repeats were. You're so, going to have your whole hat done and it's going to just be purple and gray. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I was thinking that I would maybe, I might get into the second. Yeah. I think I'll get into the second one, but it's turning out to just be all the same color, which is totally fine. Yeah, it's it still it's, looks really pretty. It's super fun. This is, in a, very, this is a very addictive knit. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to knit um, her shift, the cowl. That's the one that I started, um, yeah for quite some time and the then the hat pattern was released and I was like oh well I can't get behind the hat pattern because it's less of a commitment uh so I am mixing fingering weight yarn and sport weight yarn totally fine hat doesn't really matter yeah and it really makes that pop out too it because does, that's the sport yeah because it's fatter um I'm using the same needles I knit for the two um uh Hat, Harry Potter hats. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what is that? What Leviosa. Those Leviosa hats, uh, which is a two, two or two and a half for the ribbing and a four for the body. Um, so, in fact, there's all the extra stuff is in there. It's all I'm all already set. It's like my little fingering weight hat bag. <laughs> it's just ready to go. So the, it's this is super fun. I could see knitting more of them. Uh, it's a 
again, a, one of those patterns where once you figure out, oh, this is how the stitch goes, yeah. it's very intuitive. It's just you just have to keep track of which um, which one you're doing, and yeah. you can totally, totally go. So there you go. And hats are fast. They are fast. Even like a fingering weight slash sport weight hat. Um, I think the cowl is the cowl in sport weight. DK? The cowl is. I'm doing mine in a mix of sport DK. Yeah. Cause I have a. I'm gonna have a bunch of odds and ends of DK from various yeah. projects I've been working on, and I was like, they all kind of, they go enough together yeah. that you could probably use them for. Yeah. For the shift. Cause that would make it super squishy and lovely. Yeah, I'm using Arroyo, which mm-hmm. is. It's a lightweight. They, I think they call it DK, but it's it's really closer to a sport. And uh, Primrose, their DK. So, going back to this, this is DK weight yarn. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna finish the sleeve with this skein. So I have a whole third skein because I was going with the yardage and the pattern. Well, uh, did I? I think I've talked about how this pattern, I messed up the count somewhere. Yeah. The stitches weren't right and didn't match any of the sizes. So I actually don't know what size I make. (laughs) It fits my kids. So that's all all I care about. Um, But it's sort of a hodgepodge of different sizes. So who knows? It's yammy. Counting's hard, I guess. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. Who knows? Sometimes you just go with it. Uh, so the only other thing I've been working on, I feel like I've just been doing nothing but knitting over here, is the Blackberry shawl. And as I was telling Kelly, I'm down to the part of the shawl where it takes me like half an hour to knit a row because there's a lot of stitches on this ne- on these needles. It's so pretty. Thank you. It's just a, a really fun fun pattern good i think everybody who's doing the knit along is also has been enjoying it so let me see if i can stretch this out a little bit so you can see so it's a very so this is the top of the shawl um there's just different sections lace and garter and intermixed with some mohair uh again very intuitive pattern like once you figure out how this works you can just go um I'm down to my last repeat of the lace, and then there'll be another mohair section, and then the section for where you bind off. So you do another garter panel, and then um, a, I think it has a pico edge to it. Okay. So thank you. We've had a lot of, or not a lot, we've had some questions because we are doing a knit along as to whether or not you need two skeins of this fingering weight yarn. I think you're going to. Um, I have I have this much left of my first skein so I still have um, the final lace section to go and mm-hmm. then another garter section to go and Pico takes quite and a lot and Pico too. takes a lot so I expect I'm going to use probably if I had to guess probably at least half of this mm-hmm. if not more um, because every row is more stitches so it's just okay. getting bigger uh, so I think you will need two skeins um, unless you wanted to s- and stop it early. Yep. So that's always an option. Um, particularly with something like a top-down shawl, you do have that ability. Clearly, I've not woven in any ends over mm-hmm. here. That will probably be a project of shortly because it's getting a little fringy. <laughs> Lots of fringe. So, and this is the shawl that we had the mohair incident mm-hmm. with, with the doggy. So if you're looking at this and you're new to the podcast and it looks like the first couple of rows of mohair, maybe a different color. But not at all. <laughs> you're seeing things. <laughs> Don't look behind the curtain. No. Uh, it's the same colorway. It's just it's hand dyed. Different so dye lot. It's a different dye lot. Um, so my dog destroyed the first mohair because mohair is apparently fun uh go check out my instagram page for the gory details but anyway it doesn't matter luckily it was able to get another skein 
of the color. And again, I think when it's on, it's it'll look intentional if somebody mm -hmm. notices they're different or they're not gonna be able to tell. So, but one of the, this is why if you're buying hand dyed yarn, always buy enough for your project. And if you're on the edge, buy extra skein mm -hmm. because they don't always match from dye lot to dye lot. It's just, it's the human, human part. And even commercial yarns can, can, yeah, they, they tend to be a little bit more consistent, but, but still there's always the risk. Mm -hmm. So if this colorway looks very familiar to the sweater I just showed you, it's <laughs> the exact same colorway, just different this base, so. fingering, her fingering base and the others her DK. Um, I think it's actually the DK is a blue face luster. Mm. I think, I think you're right. So it's pretty close. But, you know. So, lots of pink. Lots of pink happening in my house right now. Mm -hmm. Pink and purple. So that's what I've been working on. Nice. This is like my evening knitting, knitting project, which is fine. The mohair is a little dicey sometimes at night. Yeah. Because it's dark. Yeah. It can be hard to see. And if you had to rip it out, it's not fun to rip mohair out. No, it's not. So I only have one other project that I started a couple weeks ago. Nice. And oops, let me leave that stitch on there. It is going to tie into an event that we have coming up. So I will talk about all of it all at once. Excellent. We are going to, we're fortunate enough to have a local designer who is going to be teaching a class for us. So Marin is going to be coming in a week from tomorrow, which actually, well, you guys are watching this. So it, it's the 13th, which is a Thursday. We are going to have Marin coming in and she's doing a workshop on her butterfly or papillon shawl that she does. And it's a gorgeous short row. I didn't bring the picture over here, short row uses short rows to create really cool color uh, patterns and mm -hmm. there's a shawl there's a cowl there's a variation that's called the moth variation and it's really lovely as well it changes kind of the outer silhouette of the the shawl and she's local to us and she offered up to you know do this class yeah. and we it's filling up so if it, it is, it is, yeah. So if it's something that you're interested in and you're local, then definitely check that out. I have a link to it in show notes. So the first link is for, to, so you can see what the pattern looks like. It'll take you to the Ravelry page. And the second link is for more information on the class and to register if that's something you're interested in. Nice. Like and I said, it is filling. So it's a two week, two week class and then there's three drop-in sessions. Yes. And you can sign up for the drop-up drop-in sessions separately there's a charge for those yeah so we don't actually have a sign in for those they're okay. going to be a true drop-in okay so the people who are taking the class have priority in those drop-in sessions so they get to so when you sign up for the class you get two of the drop-in sessions also included so they have the opportunity to come in for four weeks and work on this project all nice. together as a group but if you've already started the show or you want to you don't have the availability to do the whole workshop but you need a little bit of extra help from Marin you can come into the drop-in sessions it's a five dollar charge and you can get help directly from the designer which is great so nice. if you've been wanting to knit this it, you know it, it would be a great opportunity to do so I decided to cast it on and so there's different options that you can use for your yarn Check out last week's episode for some uh, choices because all of our picks of the week are That's appropriate right. That's for the right. show. So you can either do it using a gradient, a long gradient, or uh, self-striping with long repeats, something like that. Or you can also use individual colors, in which case you need seven. So you have your main color, which is a... Uh, solid semi-solid something like that you need one 100 gram skein of yarn for that and then if you're doing the long gradient or long self striping then you need 200 gram skeins for that 
and uh, all of the information we've got up on the website. So if you wanted to do the, the one where you actually use individual color and place the color yourself, you need six contrasting colors to uh, do the, the shawl. But I am using a Zauber ball, which are a long self-striping mm -hmm. yarn. And this is the colorway when I went with, I think this is 1536, it's on my project page. And so I have two of these, and then I use the um, the Air Canyon uh, Nublé is the other yarn, and they're both a, a single ply yarn, and I thought they would pair really well together, and this is a really pretty soft gray. I think this is color 221, it's Cornerstone is the color. And let me show you, I'm not very far along at all because I haven't worked on it a whole lot. Um, but it's gorgeous. That is how it's coming out. Isn't that fun? So the very, very first section doesn't have a little, little bit. There's no short rows and then you jump right into short row shaping. You can see in this section here and all the next sections there are, there is short row shaping happening in there so that you get some really cool effect. And it's already started, it's done a little bit of a shift from color. And then I'm in this dark purple section, then it's gonna go back to uh, a color like this, and then it goes into a really bright orange. So I think it's gonna be really, really fun. So that's, that's what we're making in this workshop with Marin, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think people are, are really excited about this class. The finished pieces, if you go onto the Ravelry page, you can look at everybody's done something different, you know, where they've used either different, uh, pairing a couple different long self-striping or gradient yarns, and then there's also some where people have gotten really creative color and, and done place the color, so each of these sections might be a different color, you know, more ends to weave in for sure, where this one, you carry your yarns so you don't have ends to weave in, which is really nice. Yep too so kind of whatever you know whatever you like to do um it, it makes it really nice for that so nice. check that out uh that link's all over the place for that so that's awesome. what i've been working on cool yep and so this saturday speaking of events yeah this saturday is worldwide knit and public <laughs> day uh we are a worldwide knit and public day location mm -hmm. uh and we have had uh, have planned some very fun uh, events f in conjunction with Worldwide Knit and Public Day. Yes. Um, which we are calling the Muscle of Yarniad Games. Mm -hmm. uh, it should be a riot. There's actually um, t-shirts that you can purchase and I've put the links in show notes if you're interested. You don't have to be local to us to get a t-shirt. Um, I can show you guys pictures so you can see them because I think they're they're fun and the person that makes the t-shirts is somebody that's local local to us so that's what the front looks like so it just has the yarny ad games logo on it and then on the back um, it says team meerkat because <laughs> why not <laughs> I love it that's great. <laughs> so those um, are available uh, if you are coming on Saturday and you want a t-shirt, you can order them in advance as long as your order is put in before 5 p.m. on Friday. Uh, we will have the shirts here at the store for you. Wow. Yeah. Fast turnaround. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. Is she going to pull an all-nighter? I don't know. <laughs> um, so, we'll, so we'll see. And if you are not local to us and you want a shirt, um, there's, uh, she set it up so shipping's included or you get free shipping. So just use the coupon code uh, in the show notes uh, for free shipping. And so um, become part of Team Meerkat. That's hilarious. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's really fun. So Ange isn't here too often, except for when she podcasts usually, but it's been really fun. So Andrea and Pam, who are our employees, they're fabulous, and they've been having so much fun with this. Yep. It's it's really funny, because a lot of times I'm sitting in the back office, and I can hear some of the shenanigans up front, and I love it. Yep. It's so great. there'll be fun events like knitting needle javelin. Mm-hmm. Speed knitting and crochet. 
Pom pom toss. Pom pom toss. Uh, rhythmic gymnastics. Yeah. Yeah. We told them they had to limit it to eight, eight events. events. And there will be medals. There will be medals. Meerkat medals. Meerkat medals, of course. Of course. The three pl- in the three places. So yep. gold, the silver, gold, and silver, bronze. and bronze. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And prizes. Yes. And food. So we're asking everybody to bring a dish to share, and we're gonna have some food, uh, sandwich fixings here, and mm-hmm. some cookies and other treats. Yep. Uh, bring along lawn chair yep. as well if you want a comfy chair. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be It'll a lot be of fun. fun. And you're knitting, and or you're of course, crocheting, or you're whatever. whatever you want to work on. Yes. And if you don't want to participate in the games, that's totally, totally fine. Good. You can laugh at the rest of us. You can sit and hang out and just have a great time because it's gonna be so fun. Oh my god, yeah. So fun, and we hope we don't cause an accident on Route Seven yeah, if right. people see us. You know. I know a really good body shop. <laughs> Just saying. They'll fix your car right up. <sighs> Deal with the insurance company. They're going to be like, those would crazy that knitters. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Deer. Oh, no. Deer on the other side. Well, that was That's right. That ago. was. Yeah, yeah. I remember you telling me about that. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, yes. I know people, if that does happen, <laughs> I should probably bring some business cards. <laughs> it's not inappropriate at all. <laughs> like passing out business cards. We're going to be on the lawn. We're right on Route 7, which mm-hmm. is sort of a busy-ish. It depends on the time of day, but it can be a pretty busy On a Saturday, road. it's probably going to be pretty busy. Yeah, but there is a traffic light right there. So, you know, if traffic is stopped Stop. for the light, mm-hmm. you know, they can watch our, our fun. Yep. Maybe we'll try. We always say we're going to try to do something live, and then we just forget. But if maybe we'll try to go, Wi-Fi like, YouTube Wi-Fi reaches live. out there then we can. Okay. That might we'll be the check. only trick. We might be able to get partway into the parking lot. Because it would be fun to broadcast some of those either live or, or if it's Instagram not, or something, yeah. we'll take some video and try to put yeah. up a, something. Yeah. We'll do at least some some social media stuff so you guys can see the, yeah, the craziness of it. Because it is going to be fun. And I know there's some local netters who aren't available that day and I I right. know they're sad to miss out on yep. it. So because it's the um, the Green Mountain, the Cranken is happening. Yes, um, up at the fairgrounds. Yep, I'm actually after our event is over, I'm gonna zip up there real nice. quick. So Nancy, who's a wonderful customer of ours, she's just an all around great person, has uh, put together the Green Mountain Cranken. So this is the first time it's happening, and there's I think there's two or three or more teachers that are coming. Awesome. And it, it's a weekend event, and they're doing some really fun things. So anybody that has a circular sock knitting machine, I think they've got 30-plus people coming in for this event. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So coming in from all over the region. Awesome. Which is really exciting, and uh, they're going to have some sales reps of our I don't know. I don't, she's not technically a sales rep, but she's from a circular sock knitting machine company. There's a couple people there from different ones uh, and from the area and from not in the area. So awesome. I told Nancy I'd zip up just as soon as I could to, cool. to hang out because I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to participate in the whole event because it's, it's an overnight kind of yeah thing. But um, but I did want to uh, – we, we donated some prizes to their, awesome. to their event. Nice. So. And I do, I did see some social media stuff that the Green Mountain Knitting Guild uh, is going to be on the State House lawn in yeah. Montpelier again. Um, I resisted the urge to ask them if the Naked by Grace was also going on at the same <laughs> time because I understand it was last, last year. year. That's right. Uh, and that was pretty funny um, to hear folks telling stories from being down there and having. I think like, somebody did like a selfie with the, you know, you can. Yeah. Always- I was much, like, but... whoa, wait, what? <laughs> What's going on? Um, so there are events in other areas. If you uh, don't feel like driving yeah. or you're more local to one of them, um, check out uh, www.kipday.com. It's either .com or .org. I think it's .com. I think it's .com. But... Um, it has a list of all of the registered events um, around the world, actually, because yeah. it is Knit in Public Day worldwide. Yep. Knit in Public Day. So... Yeah, so um, a lot of so people we'll be, are having a lot of fun. So we'll be it. here knitting in public trying not to cause car accidents or maybe causing some car accidents. I don't know. We'll see. I hope not. No, we don't want to do that. No. It's not our intent. No. We'll be down on the lawn. There's a little bit of a slope, so we won't be, you know. Exactly. 
super visible, but we will be knitting in public. We will. Absolutely. And the day, the weather looks, it looks gorgeous. Like it's gorgeous. We're hoping that it stays. Pretty excited. Forecast remains Pretty as excited. is. Yeah. Um, We also have the Great Northern Yarn Hall, which is Mm -hmm. coming up in July into early August. And we have a bunch of events that we're setting up or have been set up in conjunction with that. Yep. The first one is we're actually going to do a kickoff party this year, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do some light refreshments. We are having a local Vermont artist who's going to come in and do a talk. And I am super interested in her talk. So it's nice. Eve Jacobs Carnahan, and she is based in the Montpelier area, but she's actually going to have, um, she's going to have her work in a local gallery in Burlington. Nice. So she's going to come in and do like a, a, a digital presentation of some of her art and how she went from knitter to artist. So she's a nice. mixed media artist, and she does use knitting a lot in her art, and it's very cool. And I don't know if we have a link to her website or not on. Uh, on the page I don't think we do but uh, I can because her artwork is really cool and I think it's going to be a really fascinating talk nice so um, you can swing by and do that that's going to be a Friday evening July 12th at 5 30 I believe that whatever that Friday is I'm pretty sure let's, it's the 12th let's check because I had it as a third I had it in my head as a 13th but that I could think totally 13th be wrong. is a Saturday you're right the 12th so she's coming in Friday the 12th, and so if you're going to be in the area, uh, her, I believe the gallery opening for her show is on the 13th, uh, no, it's actually the week before, so, but you can come and check every, check, you can, we've got information uh, about her her show here in the store too. Nice. So if you want to see the pieces in person, it'd be kind of fun to come and hear her talk and then go to the gallery and see nice. them. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and we have the Lake Monsters. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would ex- that's on the twenty seventh. I would expect we should have our tickets soon because yeah. I know they've been selling tickets and ticket packages because uh, I'm on their mailing list apparently yeah. uh, with multiple email addresses. So <laughs> I get them all multiple times, which is fine. That's my own fault. Um, so we should have those soon that's for july 27th which is a saturday and it's also star wars night star wars night i can't i imagine. wonder who I picked that date <laughs> who was involved in picking that date it's a mystery <laughs> yeah total mystery they're probably doing fireworks again too because last they year are. was star wars night with yep. fireworks it is and it's fun yep it's a lot of fun super fun uh, maybe i'll be able to stay for the whole game this time as a mother of two small children, I don't always get to stay for the I end. Know. But it's all right. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, we get a couple of alongs going. Mm-hmm. So we have the Blackberry Shawl Along, uh, which I showed the shawl earlier. That's running through middle of June. Middle of June, I think. Okay. I have to, what does it say? Do you have it on there? Uh, uh, beginning of July. July 11th. July. So almost middle of July. Almost middle of July. I it was through July. So you still have plenty of time mm-hmm. to get the shawl done Yep. Uh, for that. And then Kelly is running <laughs> a crochet along. Angela's not allowed crochet along. I'm so allowed. But she's allowed. <laughs> of course. I'm bust- but it was a great name. I'm busting through like the Kool-Aid man. <laughs> How could we not name it that after, know. you know, after If you missed joking. that episode, it's a few episodes Yeah, it's a, it's a few episodes of back. But that is... Is it the humpback whale? That might be yeah. that one, yeah. yeah. And uh, so that <laughs> crochet along runs until uh, July 3rd, and which it may be a little bit longer than that because July 4th is a Thursday. So depending on when we podcast, as long as the thread is open, you can keep on posting yep. your projects. And there are details on our Ravelry page. We run our nilongs typically through our Ravelry group. It's a little easier for us that mm-hmm. way. Ravelry is a great site. If you're not on it, it's a free site to join. And yep. you can join our group and knit along, crochet along, and yep. just have fun along with us. So here's a question for an upcoming along if people are interested. Um, I was thinking of doing a shift along. So Andrea Mary has so many different shift type patterns. The shawl, mm-hmm. the cowl, the hat, the sweater. Like There's just something. I mean might be fun to yep. do a shift along. And I then... think it's a great idea. We're actually going to be doing, so Andrea, 
um, who was here full time, uh, works for us full time. She's going to be doing a class Ooh. around the shift and mosaic knitting. Nice. Uh, so we're going to, it's not on the schedule yet, but keep an eye out for that. We, that is something that we have in the works. Maybe we'll run that along in conjunction with that mm -hmm. once we get the class set okay. because that would be yep. good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So I'm just, yeah, actually the one of the sales reps that's coming tomorrow, she's got a great yarn. It's actually a Schopel yarn nice. um, that will work really, really well for a lot of the, the shift patterns. So the other one I was considering running in conjunction with the other class is the butterfly. Mm -hmm. So if people wanted to do, I'll just open it. It doesn't, mm -hmm. I guess we don't do it official or not official. Yeah. Um, to do either the butterfly cowl or the, the shawl, shawl or, the or the even the moth variation. Um, yep. variation. So we'll start it on the 13th with the class. Nice. And uh, run it. That's a great idea. Through the mm -hmm. through the time for everybody through the summer. Yeah. Um, so if you're not here and able to do the class, but you want to participate and and do that, well, why don't we do that? Excellent. Sounds so, like a great idea. Okay. We're just planning on a fly. We're still going to get tagged by whoever owns the rights to that song, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so clearly lots of shenanigans happening lots with that. Mm -hmm. Super fun. Super fun. So come check it out Saturday, or we'll, we'll take pictures, because it's going to be, I, yeah, my guess is we'll gut-busting funny. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to see yeah. So uh, one last thing yes. before we wrap it up. We do have a coupon code for you guys. We had a generous viewer who has mm -hmm. given us a pattern before. Yep. Give us another pattern and a coupon code for you guys. Yep. And I should have printed the whole pattern page, but I just didn't get to that point. But I did print the Ravelry page so that you can see. So this is basket weave. Um, there's a bigger picture. It's a really pretty, I love the, the gradient that yeah. she used for that. And you can see there is some basket weave pattern in those sections. So again, you could probably use the yarn that Kelly's been showing, the Schopel. Yeah, that would be a pretty like one. Or if you have mini skein kits, mm -hmm. you know, something like that would yep. work really love, really well for that. And it is fingering weight and it's kind of an asymmetrical, so it starts thinner and then gets longer so it's it's a shawl but it's I think you can wear it a lot like a scarf mm -hmm. so it's basket weave by Katrina Workman and she is a viewer so thank you yes thank you so much and she has let's see if I can do it without shaving too much um if if any of you are interested in purchasing basket weave it's a four dollar pattern and you can use the coupon code in Ravelry checkout KC2020. I'll put it down at the bottom too. Um, and that'll give you 20% off. Yep. So, so thank you. Thank That's you. awesome. Yes. So I think this would be a great summer. Oh, yes. A great Absolutely. summer shawl. So that is it. And it's really lovely. Yes. Thank you for, thank you for gifting that and yes. for sharing the coupon thank code. Thank you. It's wonderful. Yeah. I think that's it. I think that's all I got for today. I think me too. I think so. So thanks for stopping by to hang out with us. Yeah. For oh, we didn't talk about what? what we did this morning. Oh, no. My <laughs> goodness. Before, this is how we, you know. So we, uh, we were asked by Jin, who's a customer of ours. She's really just a lovely person and on occasion gets the drop in for our knit group but unfortunately we don't get to see her as much as we would love to see her mm -hmm. but she hosts a radio show weekly radio show and it's on a local radio station to us in mm -hmm. uh, Burlington yeah and she asked if we would come on and talk about knitting and events and community that you know that we have here in the knitting community and so of course we would jump at the opportunity of course and all three of us believe this, it or not were available it was a june miracle i sent these guys an email because i had been talking with jen about it and 
they're like, yeah, I think I'm available. I'm like, why? <laughs> Yeah, so everybody was available, so we all met at the radio station this morning, and uh, she did an interview. It was so cute because she had found a bunch of knitting or yarn or sweater-related songs. So in between the the interview questions, she played the songs, and it was great. So So she, if you miss it this morning, uh, we did... we, we only set this up on Monday evening, so it was it was really short notice, but we did social media as much as we could before the before yeah. we went on. But if you did miss it, she is going to be uh, posting the interview that she did with us on uh, her podcast. And it'll probably be after this episode airs. It will be. I think it's so. going to probably be next week sometime okay. before she has time to get that all together and up. So... But she's going to, as soon as she does, she's going to send us the link for it. And we will let you all know where you can find that. So So that was super fun. Yeah. And she's going to put a uh, playlist of the songs that she played on her Facebook and Instagram pages as well. So uh, she's, you can find her at the Upside VT. And we'll, I can link to that in show notes as well. And then once we get that link, I will share that with you for sure. Yeah, because so that'll be fun. We had a lot of fun yeah, chatting about super fun. the knitting community that we've got here because we've got a great one. Mm-hmm. And just uh, we talked about Worldwide Knit and Public Day. And, and our online community that our we Our online community. So all yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah, which we are so thankful for. Yep. And we also talked about a little bit about the beginnings of the store, how we came to be. Yep. So it was a really fun morning. Yep. I got to knit. Yep. I know I didn't bring mine in because there was so much traffic this morning and then a train, which backed everything up. So that train was just going, they were doing something. That train just kept going back and forth and back and forth. So when I you know came, what it was? What were they doing? So it was, um, we've got the Vermont uh, Air National Guard here in Burlington. Yep. And they went down, I think, to Louisiana or Georgia, somewhere down um, in the southern states for training. And they do the, they don't do the training that often, and they have to ship a lot of their military vehicles down. Uh, and that train, it's fo- so funny. The train goes right behind. It's like a half a mile from my house where where that train goes through. Yeah. And I followed it the whole way uh, up. I saw it, and it was all of the mil- they're all coming back. Um, so the the training it. is done, and and most of the the um, the troops actually fly down and fly back, but some of them actually do go on on the train on the train with the vehicles. Okay. But, yeah, it was all the military vehicles coming back. So they were probably – and the, the rail yard is is not too right far there. from where yeah. we recorded, uh, where the studio is in the south end of Burlington. So they a lot of times have to, you know, maneuver and do things to, to, to get all the cars lined up where they have to be so they can unload the vehicles. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So – it, it kind of back and, <laughs> and, and never mind just the road there's roads that are closed a lot of like road construction because it's, it's that just... time of year so our season is our warm season is so short up Very here short. that if they have road projects that they have to do they have to start they as soon as they can and the same time yeah so a lot of detours and stuff going on so yeah. it was a little crazy getting there but i made it just in the nick of time just, yeah yeah absolutely and we ha- stay tuned for um, some announcements about Ryan Beck mm-hmm. and uh, things related to that weekend. Yeah. So, because um, we're pull- starting to pull all that together as well. Yeah. So we our plan is to do a bus again this mm-hmm. year. So if uh, you want to start blocking out time if you need time yep. to get time off for that Saturday we usually take the do the bus on a Saturday mm-hmm. and uh, we'll be down there Friday for needles up and uh, probably also at least one session of Indie Untangled mm-hmm. uh, and then we'll be around on Saturday and Sunday mm-hmm. so. yeah we go for the whole weekend because uh, we catch up with a lot of a lot of people down there mm-hmm. so uh, but our plan definitely is to do a bus so we're yep. gonna get that all worked out and uh we'll have the registration up before too long yeah and so that you guys can start making plans if that's something that you would like to do yep we've already had a lot of people asking about it yeah so So we're doing it it's a nice way of doing it it's a long day but 
you, it's less driving it's for like you. eight hours of knitting time <laughs> yeah because it's about give or take four hours and, and i've ridden that bus down and back a couple years ago it's yeah. super comfy yeah it's, it's like if you have to go like that's the way yeah. to go it's one of the bigger luxury motor coaches yep so yep so so yep. stay tuned for that yeah so. i know it seems so far off but it won't be it'll be here and it'll be here before we know, we know it, it. mm-hmm yeah. I can't the believe way. <laughs> they did the, the needles up VIP tickets already. I know. Went on sale and sold out. Yep. <laughs> so it's barely that time of year. <laughs> yeah, it's that time of year. So. All right. Well, thank you for stopping by. Yes. We will see everyone. Uh, if we don't see you on Saturday, we'll see you right here next week. Happy Worldwide Happy. Knitting in Public Day to everybody. Or Crocheting Day if you want to bring your crocheting. That's right. I might bring it just to be that person. <laughs> because that's me anyway but have fun have fun have a good weekend that's right we'll see you next week bye bye it is pretty i think we've got we've got it in the sock and we've i brought it in in the that worsted teal feather i know isn't that and that's pretty it's so pretty the camera is just not picking up the depth of color on no. that chameleon no it's gorgeous there's just but the even with like mm-hmm yeah rattle red. red ravelry red it would be beautiful this red is so gorgeous i know i'm surprised more people don't buy it and the other one mm, the green the fresco seco. that one would be really pretty oh that one really is popping out that green and yeah any of those would be so pretty i mean you could even do like those two <clears throat> together oh, would wow. be really fun well, those be fun yeah do not. a pretty three color shawl I do not need more yarn <laughs> I know do not I love this colorway though when it came in more oh. darn <laughs> I know note to self do not need and more yarn and then this one this is Persia mm -hmm. that one if you want to go really subtle and dark that would be really pretty uh yes <clears throat> it's similar to this is potion that's got more purple in it. But that like. one's it's a and little blue. little brighter, has a mm -hmm. little bit more um, bright colors. <clears throat> awesome. Oh, stop bothering me. Wait, <clears throat> wait. <clears throat> So I'm down to the second sleeve. I say that like there's more than two sleeves. <laughs> down to the <coughs> last sleeve, also known as the second, the second sleeve. sleeve. Hey, that's great. Mm -hmm. Cruise on along on that. <clears throat> I could have been done, but I started a new project. Cause why not? <laughs> why not? Indeed. Why not. And I've also been working a lot on Blackberry shop. Have you? I'm at the point where in like an hour I can get like two rows done. Mm -hmm. There's so many stitches. They're on long, the needles. yeah. So I'm pretty sure that William is coming on Saturday with me. Is he? Because he wants fun. to participate in the games. <laughs> of course. Of course. Who wouldn't? I know, right? <clears throat> and it looks like it's going to be a lovely oh day. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for <coughs> the weather after today. It's supposed to be, be a little nice. little cloudy in the morning tomorrow, but it's supposed to be get up into the mid-70s and sunny for like three plus three to almost four days. It's going to be amazing. It will be. Because it's been ridiculously cold here and rainy. I know. I haven't turned the heat back on in my house, but... <clears throat> the heat got turned off, and then somebody, not me, turned it back on. <laughs> Wasn't me. I'm not complaining that it's back on, but... Um, yeah, no. I was not the person that turned it back on. I think our thermostats are set at, like, 50, so... Yeah, it's been chilly. We've been out at both ball games sitting in mm. this 50 degree windy and with it being damp weather. and yeah, yeah it's miserable it's, yeah 
It's one thing if it's 50 and sunny and calm. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's been it's been this biting cold <clears throat> wind that has accompanied our crappy weather. <laughs> the rain and yeah. Yay June. Cuz it is June. I know. Are you? A little slubby bit. It's it's not the yarn though. It's something that's got itself wrapped around the yarn. Hmm. There. It's probably probably uh, yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> All right. Ditch bitter. Who knows where it's from? As I was pulling. Uh, dog hair out of my bag this morning attached to my yarn like a nice little fluff of it so yay house with pets mm. yay house with pets oh we forgot our meerkat I should probably go get oh yeah I have <clears throat> something else too um We'll have to grab all of the outfits so we can talk oh. about those because we haven't yet. Okay. Mm. Did you grab the purple? One, we, we showed it last week. Did we show that last I, week? Yeah, William and I showed it. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. I watched part. I, did I watch? I have to watch the whole thing. I have to watch the whole thing. Let me see. Look, we have stitch markers. So pick two that you would like. Oh, those oh, no. are nice. Look, and she even told us what they are. Oh, cool. They're semi-precious stones. Aren't they beautiful? Wow. Oh. Those are beautiful. Aren't they lovely? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fun. Oh no, I dropped a stitch. The question is, which one is which? So she numbered them. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> black stripe run, run, rodonite, I think. Is this one. It's the top one. And then Indian agate is mm -hmm. the second one. And then carnelian is three, mm -hmm. and then tiger eye is four. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Might have to take tiger eye just because that's fun name. My um, I didn't wear it today, but I've got a tiger's eye ring that my husband had made for me. Oh, do you want it? It would match your ring. It, it's fine. You don't want to have matchy, matchy jewelry. <laughs> Mine's Natchy, green. Mine, matchy knitting mine is bling. a tourmaline tiger's eye. Oh, so it's not quite matchy, matchy. No, I do have a regular tiger's eye ring though too. Um, that's really cool. And I'm eyeballing the bottom too. Okay. One of the bottom two, but we should show them. This is a, what a nice little container. I know. That's in. It's so sweet. Awesome. No, all kinds of goodies. I know. And have like a little chunk to cut out while nobody's sitting here. <laughs> As we're all running off to went off to get the things that we should have had before we sat down. But that's cool. We had most of our act together. Mostly. Yes. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good for us. It, yes. My little pockets want to flip up. I've got I should stitch these ones down because I don't use the upper pockets. Oh yeah. The bottom ones I I leave open, but these are the ones that are being persistent. <clears throat> All right. Should we get this cruise ship underway? Do we want to push the camera towards you more? It's kind of lopsided. Is it? <laughs> well, not lopsided, but there. It was more focused. There's a lot of extra dead space over here a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> <laughs> I just had ranch dressing on carrot, so it's making me flemmy. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Cast land. That's okay. I can tell them about my butt bruise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We are, that's a good outtake story. That is a good outtake story. 
All right, so I'll tell it really quick. So Friday, I decided to make some socks on my circular sock knitting machine, which you'll see in finished objects in a few minutes. But I have this stool, and it's a folding stool that I use. Are you already seeing them? Because this is at the end. That's true. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I forget. Um, this folding stool that um, is not meant for, you know, me to be sitting on all the time and using as an all the time chair for mm. my sock knitting machine. But the reason that I liked it, it was a good height. Well, my table that my sock machine is on is adjustable. So I can raise it or lower it so I can stand at it if I want, which is really nice, which thankfully I could because after I tell you the story, there's a reason that it was good. I could stand for a couple of days. Um, but I have this bad habit. The stool doesn't have a back on it. So it's just a little kind of triangular stool and I twist a lot because if I have to reach a different tool or some weights to hang on the sock as I'm making it whatever it is I have to move and I twist so I just apparently did that a few too many times and the little supports that are on the legs completely broke off and the whole thing twisted and I fell and I have this lovely black and blue that's about that long and about that wide on my backside. <laughs> and it was pretty painful, and I hadn't been able to sit comfortably <laughs> for a few days. I, I'm okay now. Yeah. But I also tweaked my back and used my wrist, which, you know, you're not supposed to catch yourself when you do that, but it's just one of those things like you do. It's automatic. Thankfully, I saw the chiropractor on Tuesday, so he helped work out a lot of the kinks. <laughs> Carol gave you some deep blue? No. I've been using Arnica on my bruise though, and that's good stuff. Seems good stuff. Yeah. Yep. Last week was a rough week, but I won't go into any more detail than that. Yep. So. And I will, in the outtakes, thank everyone for their very kind comments <laughs> um, about William and the job that he did on the podcast last week. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, he does too, but I, I super appreciate it. Um, and thank you for all the suggestions for his mm -hmm. next, next project. Um, I won't tell you how long he's been working on the existing project. <laughs> um, so we'll see if we can get him finished with that. Cause I'm trying to get him to finish one thing before he starts the next thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think as a new knitter, that's kind of important. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but he's got this, as he tells me, he knows how to knit. Excellent. So. Um, I believe he's going to make an appearance at Worldwide Knit in Public Day this Fun. weekend. So he should bring his knitting, and we'll see. Maybe we can get him done with that headband. Excellent. And then he can pick out yarn for the next project. I um, like the idea of him doing a hat for his favorite sports team. That's a great idea. I think that would be fun. Yeah. yeah. I think he'd enjoy doing that. Yep. Nice. Yes. Um, so we'll see what he decides. <clears throat> since he decided, since he was going to knit clothes, at whatever that's about. <laughs> it's fine. Well, you know, that's fine. Um. So yeah. So thank you, everybody. Yes. Yeah. It's very kind. Very kind of everyone. Um. And sorry for the choppiness of the uh, podcast last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So part of the reason why it was so choppy is that I had to cut out a giant squeal by Abigail, which trust me, nobody wanted to <laughs> left in there. Um. So it just made some of the splicing a little awkward and. Uh, had me put the pictures in before I really wanted to, just to sort of help transition that awkward, like, cutout. <laughs> so that's kind of what was going on. Um, but, yeah, oh, you dear. did not want that in there. It was irritating me, and I'm used to it. <laughs> so. <laughs> Ears splitting? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that would be the accurate way to describe that noise. <laughs> so. Um, but we muddled through. And uh, it was all fine. It was great. So, anyway, but we're back. We're back. We're a day early, but it's yeah. cool. Gives me one more day to edit. Uh, shall we jump in? We should. Okay. We should. <clears throat> 